$10 paddle versus $200 paddle. Which one wins? Hey guys, Barrett here. Welcome back to another video. Doing something a bit fun today. I had to stop the other day of like, what's the difference between a $130 paddle compared to a $150 paddle? Like what's really the difference there? And there's probably a lot of economic reasons why people price products the way they do. But I love taking two extreme examples of something and then comparing them. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. I'm gonna warm up with this Pickleball Central Conga Kanga paddle. It's $10 and then I've got the Selkirk um, Vanguard Hybrid Epic, which is a really cool paddle. I've actually done a review of this one, $10, $200. So let's get started. Oh, yes, point, point with the wooden paddle. Had to do a little trash talking. Oh, stupid paddle. And then blame the this paddle. This is great, I get to blame everything on the paddle. That's a joke, by the way. Pretty good block shot there, not oh. bad. I kept that little clip in because I mishit the chop that I used to get the ball back to him. Good thing. Yeah, exactly. That went so I was trying to like hit it near their foot, but it went all the way back to the to the baseline. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Alright. 101. Why that happens. The one thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that the weight makes all my hits late, essentially. Sort of. We'll go sure into what? details about that. Good third. Just barely out. Great third. It was good. Hey, so far so good. <laughs> so we're up 4-0, not bad. <laughs> that, was, that was so high. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing because... Yeah, there's another... Yeah, so like there's a lot going on here. We're going to get into the details of all this. Shot. That's user error. That has nothing to do with the battle. Purely user error there. <laughs> That's insane. Stupid paddle. <laughs> I didn't play the paddle. <laughs> yeah, a little I'm gonna too miss high. everything. A little too high in the dink there. Because it's so short. Yeah, it's just so high. The, the paddle, essentially what's going on is that the paddle, I can't keep the paddle hinged long enough. And so it collapses through earlier and the face is open when I hit the ball. So it goes oh, higher. Oh, good shot. That was just a really good shot. <sighs> oh yeah, good shot. Okay, let me pause right here and just kind of explain what's going on. So, essentially what's happening here, there's there's two main things going on. First of all, it's very difficult for me, well it was, it was, this was like two weeks ago, but it was very difficult for me to feel how the ball was performing off the paddle. I could hardly feel the ball, so it felt very awkward. But the other thing, and really the most important thing, is that it's a 10 and a half ounce paddle. And so, the, it's so, heavy that when I hinge my wrist and I come through, I can't keep the hinge there for very long because the paddle is so heavy. So it collapses down quicker. And so as the paddle is coming through, it's more open here instead of being back here. And so I end up hitting the ball too high. That's why a lot of those little mid-court volleys and a lot of these shots are just going too high. I, it's, it, the paddle's way too heavy. So that's what's going on with that, uh, just to explain. 
And that's why I'm laughing, because it's like, it's, it's hilarious. The other thing I want to mention here is why I'm mishitting so many of these shots on the very tip of the paddle. Like, why are so many of them just de barely deflecting off of the tip? So, you can see how much shorter this paddle is, the conga, compared to this Selkirk. I mean, the lensing effect in the camera is making it look kind of weird. It's about a half inch, but it's not that simple. So, typically these paddles have these little knobs at the very bottom here. You see that? Let me focus. This knob lets the paddle fit into your palm. I like holding the paddle as far down as possible so I get the maximum amount of reach and maximum amount of whip. But it's harder to do on this paddle here. Um, it feels awkward down here. Also, there's this little band here that you can put around your wrist. And it feels weird when it's, it's kind of like whipping around a little bit and it kind of gets into my, gets caught in my pinky sometimes when I'm holding it. So I was choking up more and that gives you less reach. It's still crazy, it's only about an inch off, but that inch can make a big difference. Not only that, but there is absolutely nothing up here. The sweet spot is way down here towards the bottom. There's nothing up here. It's really crazy. Okay, let's continue. God, there's no feel on this thing at all. Yeah. You can't actually tell how hard you're hitting it. Yeah. Good third. Oh god. There it is again. <laughs> so, the the, the like, face okay. the face whipped through so quickly that I hit it too high. This is <laughs> same <laughs> thing. Perfect. <laughs> I'll explain why I'm laughing in a little bit. You you'll you'll see why. Not bad. Not bad shot. <laughs> this, the swing tells a different story than the uh -huh. hit. The swing tells a different story. Okay, now look, the last thing I want to do is like blame the paddle, right? But the, the hard thing about doing these kinds of comparisons is that there's such a massive gargantuan difference between this wooden paddle and the one I'm going to play with next that it's a bit, a bit more difficult to, to get used to. But, but there were some things that were going on that didn't have anything to do with the, pa the fact that I'm not used to playing with a wooden paddle. Um, which I'm going to get to into here in a second, but let's play with the $200 paddle next. Okay, here we go. Yeah, definitely hit a couple of shots way too high there. But, but, for, but performance wise, way better. Way better. Shots are are much lower on the drives like that. Those little thirds I'm doing, much lower. I'm still not used to this paddle at all. But so far the performance yeah. just in that these first couple of rallies is huge. Oh god! Got me. Already I'm noticing a massive difference in this paddle. It's actually significant. Yep. Oops. Oh god, good shot. Bad shot on my part. <sighs> Another bad shot on my part. Nice. Still gonna make mistakes. Even you know, with no matter how much nope. the paddle costs. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love those little lobbers in between, right? Barely out. Oh, really? Funny enough, Dang. that's the only third I missed that entire game. Oh, that's Ooh. beauty. Beauty. Oh, that's yeah. beauty. You see how low that mid-court volley was? That's the paddle. Ah, that was not the paddle, that was me. And by the way, when I say that's the paddle, what I mean to say is that's the difference between the paddles. Oh, 
Yeah, the rolls are much better too. My bad. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Gotta love it. A little high. Ah, dang yeah, it. I, I shot too high. That was a good shot on his part. Oh, that was wide. <laughs> so good. Okay, well, that's a thing. So good. Hey, that's why you buy a two hundred dollar paddle. Right. Yep. <laughs> Good, point, guys. Good game, guys. Hey, we finally got our first net. Good game. Well okay, so that was way better, much better game. Um, I know I didn't show all of it, but I played a lot better that game because of the paddle. I mean, there's no question that the kind of stuff I was seeing was because of the paddle. I'm going to talk about this in more detail in just a second, but. The big thing is consistency. I can actually feel the paddle strike the ball. I know how hard I'm hitting it. Whereas with the $5 paddle, it just wasn't the case. So let's go inside, shall we? And uh, I'll talk more about it. There were quite a few things that we covered during that little segment. I hope you guys enjoyed that. There's a lot of stuff that has to be talked about with, with this. I mean, the differences between the two paddles is so extreme that of course there's going to be a difference when you got and you, and you play with a paddle. It's not simply just an issue of whether or not you're used to it. There are certain, certain things that I just could not do with the $10 paddle. Now, before I go any further, I, I, I think it's important to understand that the, the $10 paddle like this, the, the Pickleball Central Conga, is good for getting as many people into the court as possible. It's an economy paddle that you buy in bulk to send to schools, to send to clinics and other, other places where a lot of people can grab a paddle and start hitting the ball. That's really, I think, the purpose behind the paddle. So it's great for that. But in terms of competitive play, that's not what it's designed for, right? And that's really the difference between a cheap paddle like this and a very expensive paddle like the Vanguard. The biggest problem that I saw and the biggest difference between these two paddles was how the ball behaved off the face, not only in terms of sweet spot, but also in terms of roughness, in terms of texture. It was very difficult to get spin on the conga. It has a very smooth face. You can kind of like feel the, the paint on there, whereas with the Vanguard, very much so has that textured face. That's what helps with the spin. The way the ball performed off of the Vanguard here, the $200 pal, was so much more, so much better, so much more consistent, so much more normalized, right? I think that was the issue I had during the game was that I didn't know how the ball was going to behave off the face sometimes with the, the wooden paddle. It was always a kind of a guess. But here's the shocking thing about this whole thing. I know I, know I, mentioned, I kind of alluded to this earlier. The shocking thing about using this paddle was that my shots ended up being different than what my body language would have told those players in the past. Again, I've played with them before. So when they see me do the whippy backhand thing like that, they know what's going to happen. But with that paddle, it happened differently and it caught them off guard. And I thought that was very, very interesting because again, because of the weight, because of the way the ball you know, doesn't really stick to the face very well. 
it was a completely different experience and I got a couple of points because of that. And so overall, like, does the $200 paddle win? Yeah, yeah, for sure, absolutely. But there were some shocking things that I learned by playing with the conga paddle. I mean, first of all, there were a couple of shots that I had with the $10 paddle that were fine. And I don't know if they could have been any better with the $200, $200 one. You know, if I could like freeze frame, you know, like freeze time and go in there and take, take the wooden paddle out and then put the Vanguard back in and see how it would happen differently. Would it be any different in some of those shots? I don't know. Maybe. I kind of doubt it. But it really mattered when it came to the overall average of the shots, the overall consistency, right? The average of how I did overall. Very clearly there were patterns that popped up and I think in your own game what really matters are the patterns. Being able to recognize what's going on in your game as a point goes on is essential, right? Because your opponents are looking to exploit that. So that was the big difference between the $10 paddle and the $200 paddle for me is that the Selkirk Vanguard here was so much more consistent it was so much more trustworthy in a way. You know, when I hit the ball, I knew it was going to do what I wanted it to do. And that is powerful. And I've never understood that until doing this experiment. If you can get your hands on a, on a $5 paddle, $10 paddle, whatever, do it. Play with it. Play with it for a couple of, couple of rounds. And then go back to your normal one and experience the gratitude. <laughs> experience what it's like to play with a great paddle. It may teach you a thing or two. Guys, I hope that was helpful. I've got a great resource for you. If you want to learn how to play pickleball, it's right up here. Click that video, you're gonna love it. Thanks, thanks so much for joining me, guys. I'll see you next time.